Now that I look back, it seems like the biggest mistake of my life. Living across from a Walmart. Agreed, I was young, naive, and a bit clueless about the dangers of this world. Plus, I was a broke college student who didn't want to take loans and not be in debt to his parents. So what did I do? I took up a job at Walmart and rented the cheap-looking home right across the parking lot of the Walmart I worked at. I was taking online classes which were pretty uncommon back then, but between working in the Walmart and studying, I hardly had time to go to a regular college. I wanted to study law and to become a lawyer. The house I was living in was owned by a war veteran who was really too old to take care of it, as it was in very grim condition and nobody was ready to rent it. So. When a six-foot-two guy like me showed up on the old man's doorstep, offering to repair the home and rent it, he immediately handed me the keys. Sure, the house needed some mending, but the rent was cheap and working with my dad had given me enough experience to fix the old roof and the cracked walls. I did as much as I could, but the locks, doors, and windows were still old. I never thought I'd need to replace them because, one, who would dare to rob a house as old as this, and two... It was right across from a big Walmart, which was mostly occupied by people. And thirdly, I was strong and I had an impressive build, so people thought twice before crossing me. Every morning I used to work at Walmart. I returned home around the evening to take my online classes, study, do some chores, and sleep. My routine was pretty standard, and it hardly ever changed. But that fateful summer day, things took a turn for the worst. Now you must know that my parents visited me often to show support and mostly to make sure I was okay. That week on a Monday, my parents had arrived with a bag full of groceries and chicken pie. I was overworked and stressed. I was grateful too that they showed up with our pet dog Kiko. The next day, they both wanted to attend a wedding and wanted me to look after Kiko. I was more than glad that Kiko was with me as we'd been together since I was ten. He was going to stay with me for a couple of days, till my parents got back. He loved to sleep in my bed, and I didn't mind sharing my bed with him. On Friday, as I was exhausted and back from work, I ate a quick sandwich and went to bed with Kiko by my side. It was around eleven in the night when I started hearing the giggles. It seemed like a middle-aged woman was giggling, but I couldn't make out where the noise was coming from. Kiko was relaxed and almost asleep when he heard the giggles too. He was instantly on his feet and snarling towards my bedroom window. I had seen this type of behavior from him before, when he was afraid or sensed a threat to be around. This scared me too, and mind you, hardly anything scares me. I tried to sleep, but the giggles continued and kept getting louder and louder. Around 1 a.m., the giggles hadn't stopped. Rather, it felt like whoever was laughing was right around my house. Kiko was now staring at my bedroom window and snarling. Finally, I dared to look out of my bedroom window, and I saw nothing but two glowing eyes staring back at me from the bushes, and nothing more. This freaked me out. Either this was some animal or some paranormal thing. I couldn't remember if my front door was locked or not, but right then, I wasn't brave enough to go check. Instead, I locked the bedroom door locked the window and hid inside my blanket on the bed while Kiko still snarled at the closed window. Around two, there were sirens all around. Cops had surrounded the area and I was still huddled under the blanket. That's when there was a knock on my front door. It's the police department. Please open up. The male voice from outside said. Knowing that it was a cop, I rushed to the front door with Kiko barking by my side. I opened the door. I'm Officer Jim Conroy, and you must be Rob Anderson. Yes, sir. Did you know what happened in the Walmart across the street? We know that you worked there and had an evening shift there today. But you didn't wait till the closing hours, is that right? Yes, sir, I do work there, but I came home early. I ate dinner and went to bed. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> well, good for you that you left early. Your co-worker Joey was murdered soon after you left. What? How? What happened? Please take a seat, Mr. Anderson. Did you hear anything absurd around 11 or 12 last night? I heard a woman giggle. Even my pet Kiko was on high alert. Why? What happened, officer? 
Before the officer could answer anything, someone screamed. It was a high-pitched sound that could pierce anyone's eardrums, followed by the familiar giggles that I had gotten used to by now. I looked out my open door and saw three cops holding a weird-looking woman. She was wearing ripped pants and a top. Her hair was knotted and clumpy. She had a weird-looking face, and when she smiled, it sent chills to my bones. She was the one giggling, the officer said. She's a mental patient who escaped from the asylum nearby. She entered the Walmart and murdered Joey and was roaming around the parking lot with a bloody knife. Someone spotted her and called us, but we couldn't find her. Thank God you were sleeping and not getting out of your home as she was hiding right below your porch steps. This new information freaked me out, but it also explained why Kiko was so distressed, and I couldn't even imagine the fact that it could have been me instead of Joey. Poor Joey was really unfortunate to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. This was the first such heinous crime that had taken place in our city, let alone in the Walmart I worked in. This just confirms how important it is to trust your gut sometimes, as it may even save your life. Do you know what a ghost town is? If you don't, then it's probably good that you don't find out. I'm Daphne, and this is a story I want you all to know. So, I am Mexican, and two things that make Mexican people famous are our food, obviously, and our over-the-top families. I, too, have one big family, and I love them all. So back when I was going to college, I used to travel back home every holiday. Most of the Mexican students who studied at Caltech usually drove back home to Mexico to be with their families. Mind you, I was no different. Often when I was going back home, my dad or my brother would drive all the way to my college to pick me up and bring me home. But this time, two of my best friends, Andrea and Maria, wanted to meet my family too. So instead of my dad or brother coming to get me, we decided that it would be safe if us girls drove to Mexico on our own. I didn't have a car, but Andrea was well off, and she had a car, and Maria drove pretty well, so we were all set to go to Mexico. Now, usually when I rode with my father or brother, I really didn't pay close attention to the road. Rather, I would sleep like a baby in the back seat because once I was home surrounded by family, sleep was hard to get. But this time I was constantly on alert, as none of my friends had ever been to Mexico before. Although Maria was closely following the GPS, I had a feeling in my stomach that we were going to get lost. Sure enough, after almost three hours of non-stop driving, we found ourselves on a deserted road with no people or vehicles passing us by. The GPS showed that we were on our way to Mexico, but we knew that we were lost. Andrea was whining about how we were going to run out of gas soon and how we would never make it to Mexico on time. Just then, we spotted a gas station and a Walmart around the bend. We were so delighted that we almost cried. God, I really need to use the bathroom. I've been behind the wheel for hours, Maria said. As soon as we reached the gas station, Maria jumped out of the car and ran towards the restrooms inside Walmart. Andrea filled up the gas while I strolled into Walmart to grab some drinks and food for the rest of the journey. The Walmart was stocked with all the food and drinks I wanted and needed. I also bought a pack of chocolates for us. As I went to the cashier with all the stuff I wanted to purchase, I saw a young girl, around my age, minding the cash counter. Hey there, would you mind checking this out for me? I asked the girl whose name tag read Tori. Sure, ma'am. She smiled and started scanning all my items. Hey, Tori, do you know the way to the National Highway? 
We're sort of lost, and we want to get to the highway as soon as possible. We're driving to Mexico. Oh, let me guess. Did your GPS bring you here? She asked. Well, yeah. How did you know? Sadly, all the GPS systems glitch in this area. Many drivers just drive their vehicles around and round without finding the highway. All you need to do to get out of here is follow the man in this map booklet. It will take you to the highway. She handed me the map booklet, which was near the cash register, and showed me which map I should follow. Hey, thanks for the help. Have a good day. You too, and I hope you find your destination. With that, I was out of the Walmart with a ton of snacks in hand and a map to guide us out of that hell. By the time I made it to the car, Maria and Andrea were already settled in their seats. I told the girls what we had to do. Half an hour later, we were driving fast on the highway. We'd gotten there with the help of the map, and we were on our way to Mexico, my home. We reached my home about three hours later than we had anticipated, but considering that we had lost our way, it was a miracle that we had made it. When we reached home, my brother, Tristan, was the first one to spot us. Hey, sis, what took you and your girls so long? I've been worried about you. Well, we got lost on our way and ended up on the wrong road, but then a nice Walmart cashier helped us out. When I mentioned the Walmart, my brother's face was shocked. It was as if I told him that the world was going to end soon. D did, you, did you say Walmart? Was the cashier's name Tori by any chance? I was not at all surprised that my brother knew the girl, given the fact that he loves to flirt with all the girls. But what spooked me was his reaction. Yeah, her name was Tori. Why? What's wrong? Did she not give you her number or something? No. Daphne, this is serious. It's no joke. Did you buy anything from Walmart? Yeah. We bought a bunch of snacks, but we ate it all on the way and threw away the trash. Why do you ask? Because there is no Walmart there, and there is no cashier called Tori. What do you mean? You need to be more specific. You know last summer when I was coming to get you, and I was a bit late when I got to your dorm, I told you I was late because I lost my way. Well, I ended up on the same road right in front of the Walmart as well. And I met Tori too. She helped me find my way back to the highway, just like she helped you. I wanted to know the name of the place where I got lost, so I searched it on the internet, and what I found was totally unexpected. It was a local news article about a gas station fire. The gas station had caught fire and burned the Walmart beside it. In that fire, a 22-year-old girl named Tori died along with several other people from that town. After that fire, lots of the town people started to report seeing the Walmart and the gas station as it was before the fire and Tori working in it. Suddenly, many people in the town started dying without any cause. After that, the remaining people vacated the town and never looked back. Now, it's a ghost town. This revelation shook the ground beneath my feet. I didn't know what to say. H how is that possible? I mean, I saw Tori. I spoke to her. Yeah, I know it's tough. So to make sure this story was true, I drove to the ghost town, and this time I saw an abandoned town and burned Walmart there. No sign of Tori or anyone else. It's true. Wait, wait, I have a map. A small booklet Tori made me buy to find my way out. It must be in Andrea's glove box. I fetched the map booklet and showed it to my brother. And when we took a closer look at the date, it had printed on it March 5th, 1998, the year in which the accident had happened. While all my family and my friends enjoyed themselves around me, I was scared shitless not knowing what to make of that encounter. I don't know what the spirit of the pretty cashier wanted, but deep down, I have a feeling that the trapped spirit of Tori wanted to help me and all those other drivers who lost their way and ended up in her burned Walmart.
It's not unheard of that Walmart employees are underpaid and mistreated. They did a whole documentary on it a few years ago. I personally don't think we needed a documentary to know how truly horrible anyone who works at Walmart has it. Come on a Black Friday. If customers aren't abusing each other, you bet we're getting it. I'm Adam, and this was my experience working at Walmart. I was in my early twenties when my buddy Marco hooked me up with a job at Walmart. I was attending one of the top universities in the U.S. when one day I was expelled and blacklisted from any other university. Marco actually studied at the same university and was going to quit as a protest, but I insisted he stayed. I was framed for cheating on a test, and I never knew who did such a thing to me, but alas, I was knocked on my very ass and forced to start over. I got a job in the electronic department at Walmart. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I was hoping to put my skills to good use. Instead, I found myself doing the most mundane tasks, such as telling people the difference in gigabytes on computers, which camera brand is better, and the oh-so-thrilling task of plunging a key into the lock of a window cabinet and fetching an item for picky-ass customers. I will say my manager Jenna and co-worker Marco were pretty incredible. They're what got me through the day when we had to work together. Jenna and I were stocking shelves late one night after closing and chatting it up. So, why do you think Marco called out today? I'd bet anything he skipped work to go on an amusement park date with his girlfriend. Oh, he really did have a migraine. I told him to stop turning up his computer screen at night. We'll see if he comes back sunburned tomorrow. We made a bet on it, and whoever won had to buy the other a box of their favorite candy bars. The next day, Marco came in and the dude looked like he hadn't slept in weeks. He missed one day of work. Hey man. Are you okay? Marco looked up at me. The bags under his eyes looked like you could stuff every grain of rice from the rice aisle inside them. He let out a big yawn, and his breath was bad enough to offend hell itself. He then forced a grim smile at me. I'm good. Where were you yesterday? He gazed up at the ceiling as though he was looking for an answer. I took my girlfriend to the amusement park yesterday. Afterward, we had a few drinks and went to bed. What was in those drinks? I asked as I opened a cabinet to put some recovery items back in. Oh, nothing out of the ordinary. We should go for drinks after work. Sure thing. Jenna came up to me and nudged me. Looks like I win. I want some Twix candy bars. <laughs> Let's go to Sam's Club and get them after work. Then Marco and I are going for drinks. You should come. I can meet you at Sam's, but I can't go out tonight. Larry's working late, so I have to pick up the kids. All right, maybe next time. Throughout the workday, I noticed Marco had seemed not all the way there. Anytime someone spoke to him, he just stared blankly. Sometimes he stared at me so long, I swear I was slipping into a trance. It gave off the strangest feeling, and I was getting convinced that Marco really wasn't himself. I was personally worried and took it upon myself to call his girlfriend on one of my breaks. I asked her about Marco's behavior and if he seemed strange to her. She informed me that Marco was just fine. Even going off to work that morning, he was his grumpy old self. I explained how Marco was looking sluggish and acting absent from his own brain. She told me she would come by to check on him and make sure he was okay. I was waiting for her to come, but she never came. I talked to Jenna about my concerns and how I called Marco's girlfriend and what we had discussed. Suddenly, Marco started acting erratic, throwing things and yelling at people, not just yelling anything either. He was shouting, confessions? I cheated on my girlfriend with the stripper last year! I stole my friend's lunch money because he wouldn't play video games with me. I crapped in the heater vent in the fifth grade. Jenna and I intervened, and while she calmed the customers down, I took Marco into the break room. Marco was sweating profusely and still uttering confessions. 
I dragged him into the janitor's closet and locked us both inside. You feeling okay, buddy? Adam, what are you doing, man? You seem like there's something you want to confess. Uh, keep going. Marco looked at me with confusion on his face. I heard a light knock on the door and knew who it was. I opened it to let Kayla, Marco's girlfriend, in. Marco looked between us. What? What is it? What are you... Kayla walked up to Marco and slapped him across the face. I knew you cheated on me. Serves you right that you were forced to shout it out in the middle of the goddamn Walmart. <clears throat> Marco let out a blood-curdling scream and looked at me. Uh, 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 I got you expelled! I framed you for cheating on the test! I wanted to get you back for screwing the girl I had a crush on! I balled a fist and decked Marco in the jaw as hard as I could. <clears throat> so you ruined my life! Marco looked at both of us and began sobbing. <laughs> what did you two do to me? <laughs> Kayla pulled a box labeled Pentothal, a drug purchased on the black market known as a truth serum from her purse. It's meant to do exactly as it says. Obtain truth from people. And it's extremely deadly if you're not given an antidote. Which Kayla and I had no intention of giving Marco. I made sure the coast was clear, and Kayla snuck Marco out of work. I excused myself for the rest of the day. We took Marco to a hotel where we watched the drug reduce him to complete insanity. He confessed a lot of random shit, some embarrassing, some downright frightening. We left Marco in the hotel alone after he started blacking in and out. Kayla left the box of pentothal with him. We knew we would eventually get caught, but that's what the son of a bitch deserved for ruining my life and forcing me to work at Walmart instead of studying to be a software engineer. He condemned me to a life of abuse and underappreciation. I had a bright future ahead of me, and then Marco had to get all sensitive about his little crush. I can't help it if she wanted me and not him. He ruined my life. I gladly took his.